evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, could we stand for the diversity commitment service acknowledgement prayer? The City of Victor Harbour acknowledges the of Victor Harbour is committed to diversity, equity, respect people of all ages, abilities, genders, sexuality, cultures, and recognize brave individuals. We do have one apology tonight, and that is Councillor Schofield. Um, I would like to say thank you very much to the gallery that items that are on the that, um, The first item that we have is actually, well, the first two items that we have adjourned. And according to the Local Act and procedures, those items precedent and I have to do the choice about that. Um, unfortunately the first one is a so I am going to have to ask the gallery to leave so that we can go into conference um, and you know, I'll, I'll first of all ask the council if we can go into conference um, but um, I don't have any choice in that matter uh, at all. So the first recommendation is um, that we go the agenda item information that the disclosure of which could reasonably be there a commercial advantage on a person whom the council that business prejudice a commercial someone to move thank you councillor schiller and seconding that councillor those in favor against carried unanimously so thank you very much gallery it will probably be i reckon Give us 10, 15 minutes.
have another um, adjourned motion without notice regarding the Bluff Marina proposal on the table. Um, in looking at your motion before Council, Councillor Karimba, I'm concerned that we have had a resolution that was passed on um, 1st of May that Council declined to provide any further support in principle or otherwise for the Bluff Marina proposal submitted by Mr Mark Taplin under Council's unsolicited proposal policy. My um, advice is that that motion needs to be revoked prior to your motion um, coming up. So um, I would like to um, move the revocation uh, motion as a procedural motion. Sorry, point of order. Um, the CEO has just explained a procedural um, issue to me. Perhaps you could explain that to the... Um, through the Mayor, um, hopefully I've explained it well enough in the report. So there is a standing resolution, but the only way that that can actually be revoked, or a, revo a rescission motion must come to before by way of a motion on notice, um, which is the usual process of seven days before the meeting. But it actually needs to, even if you had actually submitted a motion on notice for this meeting, we have to deal with your adjourned item before we can deal, deal with your motion on notice. So it wasn't able to occur at this meeting regardless. So this motion can still be debated. If, for example, it was carried, then it would be really invalid because you already have a motion before you. Sorry, I'd like to seek leave of the meeting so I can actually, I'm a little bit perplexed because I thought the last meeting we actually didn't, this wasn't going to go ahead anyway. I was a little bit confused and I think Councillor Kemp explained it to me. Um, so I really would just like to withdraw this motion and then at a later date, if still necessary, I'll bring the motion. Great, thank you. So that motion is... The beginning of the meeting. Um, so the minutes of the previous meeting of the 24th of July, the minutes um, to be confirmed as true and accurate. Do I have <clears throat> Your information, Councillor Mann, the motion was withdrawn. Um, so the minutes of the Ordinary Council meeting on the 24th of July be confirmed as true and accurate. I thank you, Councillor. Seconder for that. Thank you, Councillor. Either of you have any questions or comments? Does anybody have? Okay, so all those in favour? Carried, thank you. Minutes of the Special Council meeting, 9th of August. And is true and correct. Seconder for that. Thank you, Councillor. Do you have any questions about that or debate? Does anybody have any? Thanks. We do not have any deputations, but we do have three questions from the gallery. Um, is Mrs. Um, Ms. Lynette Sco Sco Scocher, oh, is that how you pronounce your name then? Do you want to, would you like to come in and ask your question? If you just sit, sit at that chair at the end, and perhaps Councillor Kemp can show you how to turn the microphone on. <coughs> Uh, thanks for the opportunity to ask some questions, Mr Council. At the July Council meeting, the matter of the marina project previously rejected by Council was raised again. The area near the bluff has significant rock and shallow water. It's rich in marine life. Seals are frequently feeding along the coastline. We've had whales spotted at the end of the bluff and people are constantly fishing from the rocks in that area. It is in fact a marine park 
and creating a marina at that location would require significant dredging and blasting of rock to create the depth needed. It would decimate the marine part and I would encourage everyone to go and see how unsuitable that location is for themselves. What other locations aside from near the bluff and boat ramp have been considered for the development and why have they been rejected? Um, let me just say that the, the bluff marina um, actually was an unsolicited proposal made by Mr Mark Taplin. Um, it's not something that the council has been planning to do. Um, the location was proposed by Mr Taplin, the proponent. The council though has been looking for some time at other locations for a new multi-purpose boat launching facility because as you know the bluff boat launching facility reach, really has reached capacity. Um, and preferred locations for such a facility is really at Eastern Beach where the current volleyball, beach volleyball courts are, um, if, that was to, if that was to happen. But in terms of the Bluff Marina development, that is not something that the, the council has considered. Um, your other question? Does the council support a marina near the Bluff and boat ramp? Uh, council's resolved to decline to provide any further support um, in principle support or otherwise for the Bluff Marina proposal submitted by Mr Taplin under the Council's unsolicited po um, proposal policy at a special council meeting held on the 1st of May um, 2023. So um, I suppose the short answer for that is to no know in relation to that, that policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, please gallery. It's not... You're, you're a gallery, not an audience. Um, please refrain from, from tapping. I know that these are very emotional um, topics um, and I'm really pleased that you're here um, to, to hear about them. Um, I have a question from the gallery from Mr Luke Hosking. Mr Hosking, are you here? Good evening, councillors. Good evening, Mayor. Question one, what is the total expenditure by the Council on Legal Fees for the past five years pertaining to investigations or similar involving elected members, specifically those related to the termination or implementation of a code of conduct or equivalent measures against them? Um, over the last five years, um, the total expenditure on legal fees um, for behavioural matters involving elected members um, came to $24,652. Thank you. And um, my second question, from which location did the council procure the granite boulders that were employed in the creation of the artwork at the new causeway and also across various playground upgrades within Victor Harbour or any source from the upgrade to the boat ramp adjacent to the book? Um, I've been told the granite boulders that were used in the artwork at the new causeway and incorporated into the George Fisher playground upgrade were gifted to council from a local developer. Um, as there were no suitable sites within the land development um, for these large rocks, they were not sourced um, from the upgrade to the bluff boat ramp. Thank you. No further questions. Our pleasure. Mr Charles. Thank you, Mayor. Welcome back from your holiday. Hope you made some new friends. Uh, Mayor Jenkins, in a reply emailed to me in June 2023, Victor Harbour Council CEO acknowledged and stated, I can confirm that Councillor Henderson, the applicant, owns and operates a caravan and camping business in Back Valley. The CEO also stated that the applicant has not been advised to cease operation. Mayor Jenkins, when the development is created without council planning approval, resulting in an unapproved private business trading for many years without knowledge of council and adhering to council's planning regulations. What is Victor Harbour Council's standard expiation fee, default penalty for late payment, maximum penalty for continuing to trade without approval? Um, I might ask the CEO to answer that since it's around internal processes. Thank you through the Mayor and for the benefit of uh, your question, um, Mr Charles, and also for the gallery, I'm going to read a, quite a long answer, but it will be provided in the minutes. So, in accordance with Council's enforcement policy, Council first work with the applicant to educate and rectify any breaches, and if required, formalise the development by, by way of a retrospective development application. 
However, for serious breaches of the Act, Council has the ability to issue an enforcement notice and direct the property owner to cease the use. Council can then expiate or take further action if the notice issued is not complied with. Enforcement does not consider the length of time it was allegedly operative for. There is no expiation fee legislated under the Planning, Development and Infrastructure Act for unauthorised development or an initial breach of the Act. There is no default penalty for late payment. The default may come if the directions within an issued notice are not complied with and the timeline established as part of the directions is not met. Council can issue an expiation if there is a failure to comply with the directions of a notice issued or from a prosecution against the owners of the land. If an enforcement notice has been issued and there is a failure to comply with the directions within the notice, Council can issue an expiation. The expiation amount is $500 and a maximum, maximum penalty of $20,000. If Council elect to prosecute for serious breaches of the Act, the default penalty is $500 and to the maximum penalty of $120,000. If a prosecution is successful, the penalties are applied in line with the Environment, Resource and Development Court rules and the Commissioner's interpretation of the rules. Thank you very much. Uh, that's been recorded. Will that be in the uh, Council? It'll be in the minutes. Excellent. Thank you. And the supplementary question is, why was the applicant not advised to cease operation until approval had been applied for and granted? As mentioned previously, in accordance with Council Informants Policy, Council first work with the applicant to educate and rectify any breaches and, if required, formalise the development by way of a retrospective development application. However, in this instance, the applicant decided to cease operation. Council has not pursued the matter further because the operation was ceased. The application is within their rights to submit a development application at any stage. Thank you very much. Beautifully handled. There are no petitions. So we now move. I do hear some murmurings from the gallery. It is actually quite distracting when people are talking. So um, I would ask you to please be quiet um, so that I can hear what's going on um, and also so the other elected members can, can hear what's going on as well. Um, we come to outstanding resolutions and the recommendation is that council receive a note, the outstanding resolutions report would somebody like to move that way? Thank you, Councillor Henderson. And seconded by Councillor Burns. Do either of you want to speak to them? Councillor Henderson, do you want to speak to them? Councillor Burns? Has anybody got any questions in relation to the outstanding resolutions? Councillor Kemp. Thank you, Mayor Jenkins. Um, page 33 of the agenda talks about a completed resolution, which was the 24th of July. Motion without notice, the Bluff Marina proposal by, by Councillor Corimba, completed in August 23. Is that the one we just discussed tonight? Because how can it be in the completed section when it hasn't been presented? Sorry. Um, it was because we'd actually put it back into the agenda for it to be dealt with tonight. So it was a, an adjourned item coming back. So that goes on the completed section of yes, the so uh, if you'd... resolution because it's, uh, even though it was adjourned, I thought it was adjourned, it's still been an outstanding resolution too, it was resolved. It may well be. If you resolved something in there, then it becomes a new resolution. But yeah. the, the outcome of that meeting was it needed to come back to the meeting. Yeah, so that's why did. I don't understand why the process allowed it to be in the completed section when it wasn't completed. Okay, would you completed. have preferred it be in the incompleted section? Well, if that's another column you want to put in there, the CEO, I'd love to have that. But again, it's about process and I just don't think that was recorded correctly, you know, because it got resolved tonight because it got withdrawn. So anyway, it's just a pedantics, I guess. Thank you. Are there any other questions in relation to the outstanding resolutions, Councillor Corim? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the resolution um, 4252020 and the subsequent two after that, um, are we still haven't heard back from the corporation um, regarding these matters? Do we have a time when this will kind of be closed out or? 
sort of just ongoing, is it? So through the Mayor, I know we've actually addressed um, a, a number of the matters that were outstanding. So the Back Valley Hall, we're still waiting on a, um, some feedback on the Kent Reserve renaming. Um, we have had meetings now uh, with the Nanjiri Aboriginal Corporation about those. So we're just waiting some feedback. So we are making progress, not all in one go, but we definitely are making progress. Are there any further questions about the outstanding resolutions? If not, I'll put it to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. Council uh, rate rebate application from the Adelaide Benevolence Society. Um, the, I'll do that recommendation on block. I want to move that way, Councillor Schiller. Thank you. And do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Do either of you want to speak to that? No, Councillor Henderson, would you like to speak to that? Yes, I have no doubt that the applicant is well-meaning and, and they work. However, the application doesn't meet the criteria set out in Section 161 of the Local Government Act, as it does not administer the prescribed services of the regular provision of support for health professionals and support workers. The land's primary function is to provide subsidised accommodation rather than support for children, young people, aged people and disabled persons. Therefore, I, I think uh, we're justified in denying those applications. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Does anybody else want to speak to this? Councillor Burns and then Councillor Corinne. Um, I won't be voting for this. I, whilst I understand um, that they may not have met uh, the criteria technically, I still think there's room to be passionate as council, certainly for people who are disadvantaged or low. I think can provide in Victor and actually that to deny them, I I, uh, I struggle with that. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we constantly in this chamber say that we're a caring, compassionate council. This group provides low-cost housing and um, in, for a couple of the units, even cheap holidays for those people. Um, I'm assuming, and I don't know the residents, but there would be probably people that would be young, disabled, that live in these properties. And to not actually try and help them with some um, rate dispensation, I just beggar's belief, I guess. I don't know um, what we're trying to do here. We, we say we're compassionate, but when it comes to things like this, I think we need to, you know, be a bit more helpful. There's how many, 20 units or so, I think, that uh, are here. Um, my, con my concern is if we don't do this, does that mean the rents go up, potentially putting people on the road, what, on the street? What, what's the outcome of this? It doesn't seem like a, a, a massive amount of money considering what we were just speaking about previously in confidence. Um, through the Mayor, if I may. So it's not a direct benefit to the tenants. The tenants are provided their support by the organisation who provides them with their accommodation. This is the actual organisation seeking. They don't pass it on. It's not about it being passed on to the tenants. They, are, they don't pay the rates the organisation does. So based on the criteria, it's about the organisation seeking the compensation and the organisation, which it talks about its profit and it has surplus um, assets or cash or whatever, but it's not about the tenants. It's no disadvantage to the tenants. The tenants are still provided with the accommodation um, that they would normally be provided with. There's no guarantee that their rents won't go up. And I've looked at their actual website and they actually do have a surplus, but they actually pump the money back into creating more housing for people that are struggling. So once again, I, I don't think I can support this. I think we need to start being a little bit, we say we're compassionate, but I don't know if our actions match our words is my concern. Kelly, would you like to speak? Uh, thank you, through the Mayor, just a, a couple of other points to, to consider. Um, in terms of the uh, the application of, of the Act um, is how the report's been written, which is why the recommendation is there to deny. Um, the issue, I guess, is going forward the um, rate rebate that is provided to this particular um, entity, 
um, will next year when we do the rates be passed on to your Victor Harbour resident ratepayers and spread across the base. So I guess it's a discussion for council about whether or not you um, want to increase the rates of your actual residents to compensate for an entity that has over $45 million worth of assets and a surplus close to $2 million. Just to follow up, we actually do do things that, that don't actually um, benefit everybody in the community, but everybody pays for them. So, you know, even though this 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 business is is, is <coughs> has money and has assets, you've got to think about what it's actually focused on. It doesn't. It's not there to make money. It's there to actually provide cheap, affordable housing. And in the middle of a housing crisis, what message are we sending to these groups? You know, I, I just I don't know. That's just my take on it. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Crimber. Councillor Quinton. <clears throat> just like to sort of pipe in with, I uh, sort of um, understand uh, these points of view and um, sympathise with them also. However, if the uh, application doesn't meet the eligibility criteria, uh, you have to set the guidelines. Um, you have to, sorry, uh, make a decision appropriately. But perhaps um, administration could provide some feedback to the Benevolent Society on if they are um, eligible for any other types of um, grants or applications of support that we, the council could offer them that they would meet the criteria for and we could get that through instead. Thank you, Councillor Quinton. Councillor Mann? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. No, I completely uh, see the points uh, fellow Councillor Kremba is making, and I think that um, he, he's right in that the City of Victoria is a very caring council. If you look at what we're required to do under the Act, uh, it's very little compared to what we do do for our community. Um, and I'm very, very proud of our community services team and, and all the services we provide uh, in going above and beyond what we're required to do as a council. But I think coming back to the legislation and, and what it says, it's this is an application of this assessment against the Act, uh, Local Government Act, which is not determined by us, but by the state government. Um, and I think potentially, if, uh, and I guess foreshadowing some of the discussions later on, um, I think Councillor Kremba is putting up a motion where there's some um, advocacy initiatives to the state government, which that's where this could also be incorporated as an advocacy exercise around how restrictive the Act is applying to societies such as this. Um, so I definitely appreciate the sentiment, but I, I think we uh, we have to be careful not to deviate from the Act and what's required um, under the legislation, uh, because I think it can create more problems than it hopes to solve. But I hope we can, uh, as later we'll discuss, do some more of the advocacy around this space. Thank you, Councillor Mann. Does anybody else want to speak to this? Councillor McKenzie. Just a quick question with this. Um, I'm not familiar with the organisation um, locally as such, but have they applied for this rate rebate before in the past? Kelly? Uh, through the Mayor, yes, they have, and um, it has been denied. Are there any further questions from the floor? Councillor Kemp? Thank you, Mayor Jenkins. And um, I suppose when you look at the criteria, and I suppose the criteria is the guidelines to council or how they apply their rebates to the rate systems. Um, do we have any information? I couldn't find it in here uh, under section H that land has been used to provide accommodation for the aged or disabled. Do we know that there's no disabled people living in these low accommodation areas or aged people, um, people who are over 65 or something? Need low to afford it, affordable uh, housing? Kelly, Kelly may be able to answer that for you. Um, so through the mayor, I, I can't answer exactly who is who is in those units, but in terms of that particular consideration around the land being used, the land is being used for low cost rental accommodation, whether a, a disabled person or a young person or any other disadvantaged person use it, that's not, the land isn't being used for services to those people. The land is being used in the Act. The land is being used for the provision of rental accommodation. So that's that's the part in the Act that's that we need to assess against is what the land is being used for rather than who actually gets to use the service. Thank you. A uh, question is that council can make its own decision. It can give those rebates if they wanted to, irrespective of what the Act says. We have that power. Is that right? 
through the mayor, if I may, I guess in terms of discretionary rebates, yes. In terms of mandatory, um, I'm not sure what the implications would be of um, providing a rebate under the mandatory section, which is very, very specific about what it can be used for. Uh, thank you for that, because under discretionary rebates, I guess we do have the power and we don't have to be restricted by the Act. Uh, I suppose also I'm wondering whether the Beloved Society in its future application, depending on how this one goes, is that if they pass, if they guarantee they pass on the savings to the uh, low income people so they pay less rent, um, that will be a great benefit. And I think the, the ratepayers of the Victor Hub will say that's a great way of uh, using ratepayers' money. It is, does get passed on, but it's not in this application, so it's not one of those that we could look at. But again, I think it's a good opportunity for the council, and it's only one thousand eight hundred and sixty odd dollars divided by thirteen and a half thousand. I'm not quite sure if that rate point oh oh five cents per rate payer to pay for it. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> uh, through the mayor, so there's a couple of different components in the budget implication. Um, the mandatory section is around fifteen thousand, and the discretionary. Um, section is around the 1,896. So there's, there's two separate components. One's the mandatory section and one's the discretionary, which they've applied for both. Councillor Karimba, have you got a question? <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. So those figures divided by the amount of ratepayers we have in Victor, what would that equate to? Can we have a quick sum roughly per ratepayer to help these people out just out of interest? Um, through the mayor, I'd have to look up how many people we've got and divide it across. I guess the, in terms of an in one application, it, it's probably not a lot, um, but you consider all the other applications that may come through once there is a precedent, um, and that could be a considerable impact on the budget. Just a follow-up question. Um, every time an application comes before this council, though, even if, if we do set a precedent, we can judge it on its own merit. Is that correct? Councillor Crember, I think you know the, the answer to that question. I know, but we keep getting the same email. I just want to make sure that nothing's changed. Uh, nothing has changed. Thank you. Councillor Schiller, uh, you will be closing uh, the in, debate if, yeah. you, if you speak. I'll so I'll just uh, yeah. um, see if anybody else wants to speak. No? No? Councillor Schiller, you can close the debate. Uh, a key point to this is that supported of accommodation is a lot different to discounted rent rebates. In supported accommodation, you have staff that are supporting to people with disabilities, and that is the big difference here between what you're seeing and what you might see in a supported home that is able to receive a rate rebate, as I would understand. I'll be standard to be corrected if I'm wrong. Let's close the debate. Um, and can I remind you that when you are closing the debate, um, you um, cannot introduce any new information. So just a reminder to everybody there. Um, so I'll put that to the vote. Um, all those in favour? And those against? That's carried, thank you. Division, all those in favour? Please stand. Councillor Mann, Councillor Mackenzie, Councillor Kemp, Councillor Schiller, Councillor Quinton and Councillor Henderson. And those against um, are Councillor Burns and Councillor Karimba. That motion is passed, carried. <coughs> 9.3 is the Local Government Finance Authority Annual General Meeting and I'm Um, recommendation one, that the council appoints myself as the voting delegate and the deputy mayor as proxy voting delegate. Can I have someone to move that way, please? Thank you, Councillor Henderson. And seconded by Councillor Burns. Any discussion on that, Councillor Henderson, Burns? Um, all those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. Now, is there any notices on motion that you want to um, submit to the local? Um, 
We just haven't re we haven't received any, so we can just move on. I haven't received anything. Okay, we'll move on. Major event approval 10.2, which is the Schoolies Festival. Um, the recommendation one is that council approves the staging of the. Oh, my missed one. In <clears throat> point one. Oh, I beg your pardon, 9.4. That the ordinary council meeting for December will be held in the Civic Centre um, on the 11th of December, commencing at 5.30. Someone moving that way. Thank you, Angela Schiller, seconding Councillor Henderson. Do you want to speak to that? Anyone want to speak to that? All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you. 10.1. Um, sports and recreation grants. I will do those on block if everyone's happy with that. Um, and so I'd like the mover on block. Thank you, Councillor Mann. And seconded by Councillor Quinton. Either of you want to speak to those? Councillor Quinton? No. Does anybody want to speak to them? Councillor Burns? Um, I was just after uh, re clarification again what the existing commitment to the Victor Harbour Dragon boats was, the 25,000. Was that shared storage? Um, I thought Victoria it was. Or? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yes, it was around shared storage. It was our contribution or donation, a grant to them once we found an appropriate home. Any further questions or discussion, Councillor Karimba? Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of questions and maybe the members that are on the committee. There's a committee for this, is there? There is. Yep, may be able to answer this. Um, my first question is the Victor Harbour Hockey Club uh, insulation, ins, insula, ins, insulation installation in the club room um, that was denied. Uh, I would have thought something like that being a green initiative would be pushed. Um, I'm just interested into why that didn't happen. And number two would be the Encounter Bay Football Club electronic scoreboard. Uh, once again, denied. Um, is this something we should be looking at considering we're looking at doing the gather round or trying to apply for gather round? Would we want our sports stadiums to be sort of of that calibre? Councillor Kemp, you were on the committee. Perhaps you could answer those questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, with the hockey club, I think the committee was discussing around ownership of the building, whether it was council building or the hockey club's building. And if it's a council building, then council could contribute to insulation for health and well-being of the hockey members in their club rooms. So, um, and again, again, based against all other applications, the others seem to more of a higher priority, but um, we didn't get the information back uh, in time before we had to make our final decision. Um, so I suppose we put it back through uh, the administration support officer to um, look at um, putting something up to council uh, in a way to support the hockey club at a later date uh, through some type of, um, if it is council owned building. And the football club? The, the council, um, the council has provided the um, the Canada Football Club uh, a lot of funding over the last year or two, and part of the criteria around that if you receive grant funding from council in the previous year, you miss out and you wait your turn again because uh, you can't keep applying every year and keep getting grant funding. And other people miss out, so um, they were seeking twenty thousand, and um, we just felt that they've already received a. A substantial amount of money from council in the way of grants and community loans, so we just felt that you know they didn't meet the actual criteria for that purpose. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. Does that answer your questions, Councillor Karimba? Councillor Burns? Sorry, just a quick uh, question. Just a question. Um, was, uh, I seem to recall, and I could be wrong, that money was provided to the Victor Harbour School Board? School board? Is it in the list? It may not have been part of that particular grant round. Um, it may have been something that was separate. Does anybody have any other questions? I'll put the uh, motion. Did you want to close anything, to, um, Councillor Mann? Motion to the floor. All those in favour? 
Those against? That's carried, thank you. <clears throat> now I'll go up to the Schoolies Festival. Um, the first recommendation is that Council approve the staging of the 2023 Schoolies Festival, scheduled to occur on Moreland Reserve from Friday the 17th of November till Sunday the 19th of November, described within the report. I have a mover for that. Councillor Henderson. And seconding that. Thank you, Councillor Quinton. Mr Henderson, do you want to speak to that? Councillor Quinton? Does anybody want to speak to that? Councillor Burns, then Councillor Karimba. Um, just a quick question. Um, in the discussions that occurred between the county youth and the business victor, did a lot of the concerns get resolved? I'm going to say a lot of them got re not resolved, but as I say, I think there was some compromises made and some clarity. So one of the major uh, stipulations that came out of those discussions was ensuring that Encounter Youth engage with local businesses in regards to support for the event. Councillor Karimba. Thank you, Mayor. Just following up on Councillor Burns. So how are we going to be able to gauge the level of, um, uh, I guess, engagement by the Green team and, and our businesses? Or are we going to have a report after to see how the event went? There will be a pros, report. cons. There's always a follow-up. So okay. there's a, a, a reference group, a stakeholder group that participates in a, a post-event discussion. But obviously we want to make sure that we see material going out and make a, a call for local businesses to participate and be involved. And then obviously it's up to them to whether they are involved and we can hopefully through that post-event discussions identify how many were um, were able to participate or if they look for things to for improvement so they can participate more. Okay. We'll get that can, can, I, can I just say, Ed, Councillor Crimby, you'll see on point eight of that recommendation. Yep. The organiser facilitates up to three um, working group meetings prior to the event and one post-event meeting, providing opportunities for residents and local businesses to contribute to the ongoing. Yes, yeah, I, I, I saw that, Councillor. Uh, sorry, Mayor, but I was just wondering if Business Victor Harbour was because they're meant to be sort of like the liaising body for businesses, whether they would. Um, be involved because some businesses may not feel comfortable in coming forward so if they had a point of contact I'm not sure if they were yes, asked to be part of that. Certainly we'll be talking to Business Victor Harbour. <coughs> Are there, Councillor Kemp? Yeah, thank you Mayor Jenkins. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed because last Wednesday night watching TV at home relaxing as you do um, I saw an ad came on TV about school this festival in Victor Harbour selling tickets, advertising, everything before it comes to council for approval, which I find insulting to our community and insulting to this council. And I, it just shows disrespect to me that they've already said, don't worry about it, we'll just go ahead and advertise and start selling tickets and all those types of things. Before it got approved, I just felt that to me is disrespectful from the encounter group. Council has no control over that, um, unfortunately, Councillor. Kemp and in fact um, accommodation tickets went on sale and tickets went on sale I think straight after or the day after the last schoolies festival finished. Um, so um, you know it's it is um, it is what it is. I know what it is what it is for me but I think the fact is that again it's just showing disrespect to this community because we just go off and do it and don't worry about it. why have it come here for approval if they've already it's gone blanche that's gone ahead. So to me, I would like to see an apology from the encounter group saying that's, that, you know, um, that but that's is, my that opinion. Is a, that is a risk that um, the encounter um, group take um, when they're organising this and they pre-sell tickets prior to it coming to council. That's a, certainly a risk because the recommendation is as such that as a group, you can vote down having schoolies come. And if you do that, then they need to, you know, it's a risk management issue for them, but I do certainly take your point. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll put that recommendation for floor. All those in favour? Those against? I'm sorry, Councillor Coimbra, I already asked for the vote and I asked if there was any further discussion. Sorry. Point of order, Mayor, I actually had my hand up, but you're looking down, so you wouldn't have seen that I had another question. I saw your hand up as I asked for those people um, who are voting for this, um, and I understood your hand to be part of the yes vote. No. 
No, it my wasn't. vote was no, it wasn't, and it was just asking a just a question, and and basically it was just saying, can we move this closer to, maybe closer to when the next event finishes, so we avoid the whole issue of them not being able to advertise and give them. It's actually in, in favour of helping them facilitate their event. That, that's something that we consider. That was the only question I we've, had. We've Thank noted you. that. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you. The second recommendation is in relation to the road traffic control devices and road closure, and that council exercises its delegation. Um, would someone like to move that way? Thank you, Councillor Henderson. And seconded by Councillor Schiller. Do either of you want to speak to that? Does anybody want to speak to that? Councillor Kemp? Just a question of clarification to the CEO. Somewhere over the last term of council, I thought we gave the CEO delegation to do road closures for any event. It doesn't need to come to council for a decision. Uh, correct. I do have that delegation, uh, but we refer to this one as a major event. So major events come back to the chamber. Any further discussion? To the floor, all those in favour? Those against? That's carried. And we move now to corporate and customer services. This isn't delayed. Christmas decorations, 10.3. Public Art Commissioning Process Amendment. Um, the recommendation is that Council discontinue the Public Art Commissioning Process for the 2023 Christmas decorations and approve the Arts and Culture Advisory Group to engage with Chelsea Jalowski on the potential to incorporate her artwork into decorations being planned under the broader program for 2023. I understand that there wasn't any applications for our um, Christmas um, decorations um, commissioning project, um, and so we'll take that on ourselves. So I'll do that recommendation on block. Councillor Henderson, you're moving that way. You prefer it wasn't done on block? Sure. Okay, so we do recommendation one. Uh, I do have a question about uh, rec recommendation one. Or if we move it, please. That may clarify a few things for the mover or chamber. Sure. Um, didn't we move a resolution to do the $30,000 for the um, Christmas decorations for the art process? Didn't we have a resolution to do that? Should we not have to revoke that resolution to change for this resolution to be active? No, so it was undertake a process to uh, call expressions of interest and to engage an artist to actually then uh, create the artwork to build the decorations. But we are coming back saying that we went out and we did that process and we didn't receive any uh, participants. Um, so we fulfilled that resolution of the chamber and now we're looking to redirect those funds. I, I thought part of the resolution was to allocate 30,000 for that process to take place. Correct, so it was. So that's part of the resolution, 30,000. So then shouldn't we not revoke that resolution and this resolution then takes its precedence? Mm, no, because we fulfilled the actual resolution of what it, what it was pertaining to. But we've still got a thirty thousand dollars outstanding, and we've got to move it to another process, um, which was by way of a decision of the chamber. But yeah, okay, <laughs> again, it's just that process of yeah. uh, understanding, um, rescinding motions, and then that money then can be used in new motion. That's how I see because this is part of the original motion, which you know still is uh, active because we haven't used the 30,000 yet. Well, uh, it's not active because we undertook that process and we didn't engage the artist. So I'm coming back to redirect those funds, uh, but seek council approval to do so. Somebody like to move recommendation one. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. And seconding Councillor Mann. Do you, have a, you want to speak to that? Yeah, just so, a... Sorry, Councillor Henderson first and then Councillor Mann. Yes, I will speak to this just to clarify for the other members. I, I do chair the Arts and Culture Advisory Group, 
and in fact, um, no major applications came in um, regarding um, creating Christmas artworks for a proportion of that $30,000. We did have one applicant, and that was uh, the young lady mentioned in item two. Um, she put in, in a very, very good application that she is a 16-year-old school student, but very, very talented in, in art. And um, hence, um, recommendation two, because uh, we want to encourage her, but felt that um, she wasn't at a stage with her art development to take on the full project. And so that's why the committee, the advisory group, decided that uh, we also decided it was too late to go out again for submissions. And uh, that's why we have these recommendations in front of us. We thought it was a very good compromise between the two. We will still end up with some very good um, quality artwork, art, Christmas artwork. And hopefully some of that will include some of the designs that this young lady will produce for us. Oh, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. I just wanted to, I guess, raise in terms of Councillor Kemp's uh, questions. Um, Councillor Kemp, I love your detail uh, orientated and process perspective with these things. I think, um, I guess my perspective on it is um, we often complete projects um, that are under budget. Um, and just because we didn't spend all the budget doesn't mean that project's not completed. Um, so in this case, we um, and then also in accompanying that with recommendation one of discontinuing that process. Uh, I think this is fine from that pro process perspective as well, uh, the reallocation of that budget. Thank you. Does anybody else, Councillor Schiller, would like to speak? Just got a query. We had some trees that were a little bit controversial in that they were a bit plain. Have we addressed changing those trees so that they're, they're painted or what's happened with those? Um, Councillor Henderson may be able to speak to that from the Arts Advisory Committee. Yes, I believe so, Councillor Schiller. I think they will be decorated. <laughs> Are there any further questions, Councillor Kemp? And then Councillor yes, I do Kemp. have a question. Thank you, Mayor Jenkins. Um, this 30,000 will be added to the current uh, operating budget. So that brings up to 130,000 now for Christmas, does it not? we have 100,000 already earmarked. In no, the this is part of that same amount. There's no additional okay. funds. Thank you, just for that clarification. Yep, no additional funds. Councillor Karimba. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I do remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the original um, guidelines of this were that it was going to be local artists, but now we've changed it to local and statewide. And my other question is, whereabouts does this young artists um, live? Does she actually live in Victor Harbour or? Uh, we're just looking at recommendation one at the moment, okay. Councillor Corrino. Great, thanks. Is there any further discussion in relation to recommendation one? You've got a question? One Councilor more Shiller? question. Do we need, with the <laughs> trees again, do we need to allocate a budget for that, that painting process or what happens there? Uh, through the Mayor, no. So there is an, an allocation of funds which are to um, purchase new um, Christmas decorations. It's about ones that will be used for years to come. It's around installation. It's around the storage of those um, decorations and obviously improving the existing ones that we have. That budget of $98,000 is to do all of that. Are there any further, is there any further discussion? Councillor Quinton? Uh, for year two, what would the anticipated cost be uh, for the following year after purchase of the um, new materials? I'd need to take that question on notice. I mean, that's just purely around the installation. And at this stage, uh, it would just be a, a capital, um, so probably a staff cost of actually installing them. So I, I don't, I'd need to find it out and I can follow that up. But yeah, this was about actually um, re-establishing some community decorations that can be used throughout the city. If there's no further discussion or questions, I'll put that to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? 
Mr Carrick, thank you. Uh, the second recommendation is that Council approve the Arts and Culture Advisory Group to engage with Chelsea Chodoski on the potential to incorporate her artwork into decorations being planned under the broader program. Councillor Henderson, are you moving that way? And second in that, Councillor Schiller. Can you speak to that, Councillor Henderson? Yes, um, the quality of artwork uh, presented <coughs> by Bali the applicant was very, very good for a, for a young school student. And uh, obviously she has a lot of potential into the future. Also to answer the questions of Councillor Kuramba, she was born in Victor Harbour, I believe, goes to school in Adelaide, but still has family in Victor Harbour. She has a strong connection with the town. Councillor Schiller, did you want to speak to this? I think this is a good outcome to allow um, someone who hasn't uh, quite uh, met the criteria, but still to build her capacity as an artist is a great thing to do. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Councillor Karimba, Councillor Burns. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schiller, for um, for that uh, not meeting the quite quite meeting the criteria, but we're happy to help out. Reminds me of a previous motion where that didn't happen, but obviously we can pick and choose those things. So I guess Councillor that's great. Councillor Karimba, please, I'd remind you to keep talking about the motion and sarcasm isn't necessary. Sorry, I was just bringing up a point about what just happened. Yes. Um, and, and regarding, uh, do we actually have a figure? Because uh, there's no actual amount. It just says uh, that any associated costs with such engagement be within the existing budget. So we could be getting, what, $30,000 to a 16-year-old kid to do some Christmas decorations. I just want a figure, please. Uh, it doesn't actually stay about actually spending a figure on the artist. It's about incorporating artwork into some of the decorations, and that may be painting the Christmas trees. The actual sum of money is actually about purchasing the um, commercial Christmas decorations. Are there any further questions? Councillor Burns, sorry. Uh, um, the question I had uh, earlier was uh, in part answered. I just wanted to know, because it didn't specify, I was assuming that she was a local artist, the initial criteria. Um, I don't have any problem with what's far as, but I'm uh, concerned, uh, conflicted about, uh, I prefer that we support local artists within Victor rather than someone in Adelaide at the same time. She's got family who is, is it, um, Again, if there's minimal cost, uh, she's utilising her talent on existing decorations, but supporting but not if there's an issue. Um, whilst I encourage support of any talent, we should be focused on support. And given that there wasn't any other applicants um, and that she that. has family here. Yeah. I think it's great to be able to support a young person if we're at all able to. Yeah. So thank you very much. Councillor Batman? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. Yeah, no, I completely agree with your sentiment there. I think you know, any opportunity to, I guess, look outwards a bit for the city of Victor Harbour and just like um, my, my view with any young person, I hope they grow up and move to the city of Victor Harbour and maybe this is the olive branch to help, help do that in this instance. Thank you, Councillor Mann. There are no further questions. I'll oh, councillor Quinton. Just a caveat there. I think if you're technically if you're born in Victor, you're a local, eh? So <laughs> I'll now put this to the floor. All those in favour? And those against? That's carried, thank you. Um, corporate and customer services, end of year office closures. I'll do that on block. Would someone like to move that way? Thank you, Councillor Schiller. And Councillor Burns seconding that. Are there any questions or any discussion? No, similar to the previous. I'll put that to the floor. All of those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you very much. The CEO key performance indicators for the 2023-24, that's next year's CEO performance review. Um, and thank you to those who um, put in um, some suggestions uh, when we asked for them. Um, and I'll do that recommendation on block. Um, would someone like to move that way? Thank you, Councillor Henderson. 
and seconded by Councillor McKenzie. Do either of you want to speak to that? No, does anybody want to speak to it or have any questions? Councillor Burns? Uh, I was just pleased to see that um, some of our feedback was incorporated. I think that's really important and I know that the um, CO Performance Review Committee wanted to um, have feedback from, from Council um, in relation to, to this and include you all in as much as we can. Does anybody have any other questions? Councillor Kemp? Uh, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. Um, and when you look at, um, I'm assuming, the questionnaire, which is a, a, attachment A, are the KPIs um, under each section, which is 38 KPIs, is that correct? But I haven't seen any other KPIs apart from what's in the questions of the um, survey. I don't know whether I'm the best one to answer this, but it could be Karen. Um, my understanding is there's, there's the 12 KPAs Yes. which are listed at the back, and the other KPIs is actually basically broken up into those four or five sections and yep. then freeform. And the questions members will be asked to seek if I've demonstrated those KPIs, those questions will be asked to demonstrate that. <laughs> that brings me to that, a good point there. Thank you, CEO. Um, the KPIs uh, have to be measurable and quantitative. Uh, a lot of these KPIs here, statements are not. How do you measure them? It's going to be very difficult for elected members or senior management team to actually quantify or measurable uh, these KPIs because they're not written in the way that they're measurable. So it's going to be very difficult, from my perspective, because I know my personal opinion that um, these are very poorly written KPIs. And um, Karen, I know they're more to me around motherhood statements more so than actual key performance indicators on the performance of the CEO. So I'll ask um, Karen Rokoczynski to respond to that, Councillor Kemp. Uh, thank you for your question uh, through the Mayor. So having spoken with Mr Darrell Steelwell, who's our independent uh, qualified person guiding the CEO performance review process, um, he's explained that the key or the KPAs at the start, which are the key planned activities, in um, uh, which are extracted from Council's adopted annual business plan. Um, they are, uh, the, the measurable there is a 90% completion rate. Um, and then the others form more of a qualitative assessment with the rating scale as indicated at the top of each page under each section. So Mr. Stilwell felt that that was the uh, best method for assessment. Um, and of course, council members did have that opportunity to provide um, feedback. There are, of course, many ways to assess um, performance. This is the way that's been um, recommended by Mr. Stilwell. Thank you, Thank you for that. 90% um, is an interesting <coughs> figure. Um, that's 90% across all the KPAs. We're currently at the moment, we get a, a maybe two thirds, 100% completed. The rest are not completed. So again, it's sort of, um, to me, 90% um, just I don't know, it doesn't sit well with me personally that, you know, um, are we putting too much um, pressure on the CEO to complete 90% across all ranges or just accept the fact that what's completed at 100% is great and what's not completed at 100% and, and the reasons why not. And there must be would be justified reasons as to why not. You know, which is a current process, but doing it this way to me, I think it's putting onerous on the CEO to this, form. And this is not for this current period. I, um, I know that. Okay. I'm talking about the future. <laughs> Excuse me. So, um, I don't know. Um, I'm still deciding whether to support the 90% or uh, knock it back in my mind and keep the current system we've got at the moment, which I think is a, a fairer and great, a better system than the 90%. Um, anyway, that's where I sit. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Jenkins, for the opportunity to clarify. Um, Councillor Kemp, each of those KPAs, there'll still be that opportunity like you've had this year to, um, to do an assessment against each of the projects. So it's not just going to be like a KPI one um, one round figure of an, you know, 90% completion. There's still the ability to rate 
um, and assess against each of those projects. Of course, like has happened um, in many years, there are some times where council decides to discontinue a project that, um, that may well have formed part of the annual business plan and budget. And of course, that would then be considered accordingly. Um, things change across the year, but it's not just um, a one figure percentage as, you know, pass fail. Councillor Mann. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. Yeah, I, I can see the point Councillor Kemp's making. And I think the, um, I guess reading between the lines a bit, it, he raises a, a great point in the fact that it, with any performance review, especially at this level, there is a, a element of difficulty with it. And uh, I think previously for the background, it's been here's uh, all the projects we've pulled out of the, the annual business plan and there's an assessment of the CEO on that. But I think what, what this approach um, is trying to do and, and what, what I think is excellent about it is that it's also it's looking at the project specific scope, but it's also looking at those broader perspectives of the role of the CEO, because the CEO's role isn't just to deliver uh, X, Y and Z. It's for the, the health of the organisation, it's culture setting, it's management, it's uh, dealing with elected members, uh, stakeholders. Uh, all of these things feed into these key planned activities, but I think uh, to assess the CEO from a better perspective, we need to be considering it more in that holistic approach, which um, I, I'm really happy that this uh, this setup does. And I guess also commenting on the the 90% discussion that Councillor Kemp's raised, it, there's a lot of projects that we get to 99%, um, at, but we can't tick it off on the 100% because uh, some small reason or we're waiting on someone else. Um, for example, I know the latest uh, Main Street development that was pretty, I think pretty much 99% there, but we were waiting on Telstra or SA water or someone to come fill a pit in and, and that took months and months and months. So it's things like that where I think the 90% is a great measure as well um, because it, it gives, I don't think it puts a more onerous burden. I think it gives a better perspective of what's actually going on and allows us to assess things to a greater extent because um, in reviewing the CEO's performance, we're not following her around every day, watching every move she makes. It's it's what we see in the chamber, it's what we hear, it's what we, we read and the, the health of the organisation. Um, and I think this is an excellent metric of how we can go about measuring that. Thank you, Councillor Mann. Is there any further discussion? Got a question, Councillor Perimba? Yeah, I saw um, there was a survey, I think, and it had uh, elected members staff and then CEO and it was, am I correct in saying that? And there were certain questions and then. So that was for my performance for the year just gone. That was right. sent to you by Daryl Stilwell. That's right. Yeah, so that okay. one's to those results are to come back to council at the end of in September. Just a question for you CEO, if you may. Um, <clears throat> I noticed that in some of those questions, the disparity between what you thought your performance was like compared to what the elected members thought it was like. In some instances, there was a 50% difference? Um, oh, you're just, talking about the results that you yeah, saw? Yeah, the results, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that something that sort of, I'm sure you would have taken that on board. Were you a bit surprised with some of those figures? Uh, no, 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 no. No, not at all. <laughs> can I just, can we keep it on this particular recommendation? You're talking okay. about a survey that is coming Yeah, I was just trying to, to get a bit of background, that's all, but thank you. Yeah. Thanks, CEO. Are there any further discussion or comments? In that case, I'll put that to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. <clears throat> the risk 11.3 risk management policy review. Um, this has been through the audit committee who suggested changes which have been incorporated into the review. The recommendation is that council endorse this policy as provided. Um, at attachment A, would someone like to move that way? Councillor Burns and seconded by Councillor Mann. Do either of you want to speak to it? Councillor Burns? Only being on the audit committee, there was a lot of discussion about this and it's good to see that everything's been. Thank yep. you. Thank you, Councillor Mann. Any questions or any further discussion? Okay, so I'll put it to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you.
Um, this was also discussed at the last workshop, the local roads and community infrastructure program, the phase four project nominations for the um, local roads. Um, the recommendation I'll take as read rather than reading it all out. Would someone like to move that way? Thank you, Councillor Burns and second to Councillor Henderson. Either of you want to speak to that? Only that we have gone through this in detail and the shortlisting here coincides with discussions. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Does anybody have any questions or want to speak to that? Councillor Kemp? Uh, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. Um, certainly, um, number one, Island View Crescent stormwater upgrade, um, I think that's uh, important. But the, the other three, I feel there's a, a greater problem in our town, and that's Gibson Avenue, just off um, Bartels Boulevard. It always rain, it floods, can't access the area. Um, I think the uh, those three items which I said we could actually move out, and I will move a motion on note if this doesn't pass, uh, that you know, with the $208,000 in savings in those three areas, we put a spoon drain in between Boulevard and Gisborne Avenue to drain that water away because it's like a small lake there. And I think you know the community has been pushing hard, especially this winter, about having that updated. And, and of course, we've been told that the cost of re doing the whole street with stormwater and all that is going to be towards a million dollars. But a simple solution about a stormwater drain, um, sorry, a spoon drain could actually uh, run the water down into the stormwater system on Bartels Boulevard from Gibson Avenue. It's just an engineering solution. I think it wouldn't be that expensive and I think that will be a great outcome for the community as a whole. So, yes, I've uh, certainly had, I went and saw Gibson Avenue when I came back from holidays. I'd had a couple of um, emails um, in relation to that. I might ask Jody to respond to Gibson Avenue because that um, the flooding there has been a constant um, over this winter. Thank you, through the mayor. Uh, Gibson Avenue was one that we did consider putting forward for these funds, and it will be coming to council members in the workshop for the urban stormwater master plan um, in a couple of weeks. So, it might be something that's considered as part of that. It is a trapped low spot, so putting a um, spoon drain in there won't get the water away. It would need pipe system to take it all the way into Encounter Lakes. We have looked at that and costed that. What is the cost of that, Jody? I haven't got it off the top of my head and my computer's not working. <laughs> um, I think it was around $270,000. Thank you, but we'll be addressing that. As part of the Urban Stormwater Master Plan. Thank you. So, just a clarification, if I may <coughs> ask Mayor of um, Jody, uh, Ms. Jody Roberts. Um, so, the urban, uh, urban stormwater master plan, out of that, it's going to be recommendations that we do some works this year under capital, um, or we have to wait another year before we can do any works uh, on that street. Through the Mayor, the urban stormwater master plan actually looks at our um, forward program for the next 10 years. So, prioritising all the urban stormwater. Um, throughout that, throughout the whole city of Victor Harbour, so it's it's wouldn't be looking at coming back to council to get a recommendation for adding to the budget for this year. So just another question, if I may, Mayor, um, which means in again Gibson Avenue will be every time it rains or flood until we decide to put it in a capital budget in 24-25. Um, then so again. We're not listening to our community who have grave concerns about the issue there. And surely you're saying that a spoon drain wouldn't work with a little bit of um, engineering around the different levels of the streets that would actually capture the water off Gibson and flow it down Bartels into the stormwater system? Through the Mayor, that cost estimate did look at changing road heights and things like that. So it's a trap low spot. So I believe there is actually some curbing and, and stormwater drainage through there, but it doesn't go anywhere. And that's why it ponds. It used to go into a private yard and the residents didn't like that. So then now there's a bund there that stops the water going into the yard and instead it stays on the road. One more question, please, for um, finance manager, um, Kelly Knight, Stacey. Um, we have a very low capital budget this current year. So another $200,000 wouldn't put a major impost on the community, if we put in $210,000 for a upgrade of the Gibson Avenue and Bartell Boulevard intersection to drain that water away. I 
Lucas, the, the, um, sorry, through the Mayor, um, it's probably more around capacity um, in terms of projects that can get pulled forward. So um, that's probably more a question for um, perhaps Jody in terms of capacity. Um, but but you're right, we, we do have a reasonable sized capital budget um, and it would essentially mean that there would just be extra borrowings to cover those costs if Thank we you. had capacity we, we, we to do that. We could actually make a KPI for the CEO actually. So through the mayor, if I may. So, um, Councillor Kemp, I am well aware, like as you are, of, of the problems there. So, there is no reason why the council can't consider when we do bring the stormwater master management plan, because that's what we want to make sure that we, you look at it in priorities of other matters, and we know that it is causing an issue. Um, we do have costings, which is about 153,000, 253,000, sorry. But when it does come to the workshop, that's where we can have the conversation around. The issue is not about increasing the budget. You could very easily do that for your capital. It's about the capacity to work, but I can ask Jody now, we can have a look at that capacity. So when we have the workshop, we can have the conversation about bringing it forward into this current budget. Um, but I'm happy to take that on. And that's why part of the reason Jody did the more detailed costings, because I knew the questions would be asked, because we didn't have any plans or anything previously for that piece um, of, of road infrastructure. Any other questions or discussion? Over. Against. Carried. Thank you. Revocation of community land. This is um, finishing off what we've been doing in relation to um, lot 81 Hindmarsh Road, um, and I'll do that uh, recommendation on block. Two and three, moving that way, Councillor Schiller. Oh, sorry, Adelaide Road. Okay, um, I've just been noticed, notified that recommendation one should read portion 80, lot 81 Adelaide Road and not Hindmarsh Road. You're moving that way, Councillor Schiller. Um, and seconding Councillor Burns. Do either of you want to speak to that? I need to go on through discuss this. So I think for the community it's important. Thank you. There's no discussion. Questions? I'll put it to the floor. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. <clears throat> um, another revocation of community land to finish off, um, and this is lot 99 Hindmarsh Road. That's correct. <laughs> I'll do that recommendation on block if someone would, would like to move that. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. And seconded by Councillor Mann. Either of you want to speak to that? Does anybody have any questions or want to speak to it? Those in favour? Those against? It's carried, thank you. Um, the draft biodiversity and natural assets management plan. Um, and I'd just like to say thank you very much to all of the community groups that helped us um, with developing this plan. Um, there was a lot of work went in um, with a number of people from the community. Um, the Director of Environment and um, Infrastructure, Cathy, and her um, team, um, and um, also the environmental groups that we have working so hard um, around diversity, um, bio biodiversity in Victor Harbour. The recommendation I'll do on block um, that we receive a note, the report. Um, and that council endorse the biodiversity and natural assets management plan. Moving that way, Councillor Henderson. Seconding that, thank you, Councillor McKenzie. Either of you want to speak to that? Councillor Henderson. I think this is uh, a very good plan. I think it's also very timely with the state government currently um, putting together a, a biodiversity act. I think we are oh, ahead of the Ahead of the game, if you like, 
in terms of local government having a plan like this. Uh, Councillor McKenzie, did you want to speak to this? Does anybody have any questions or want to speak to it, Councillor Kemp? Uh, thank you, uh, Meijing. To the um, CEO, um, there's no funding to implement this plan as such just yet. Do you have any plans in mind of how much money or budget that you may want to, for this financial year, to um, bring to the chamber in the future to to do some various things? And what type of budget are we looking at for the future 24, 25 and onwards to implement this plan? I know it's a bit of a crystal ball, but I thought you know, it'll give some con um, conceptual ideas because when you're looking at one thing, I think out, out of my mind comes the community garden. I know we've got some money set aside for that current year, this year, but again, that may expand into other areas of uh, providing that type of resource to the community, which will help the biodiversity and environment as well. So just wondering if you've got any ballpark figures at the moment, uh, just to see how we can implement this. Um, through the Mayor, obviously there, there are no budgeted funds. We did put an, an allocation up within the budget bids, um, but that wasn't successful. And that was only a, a, just a, a figure to help probably deliver some of the smaller elements. So no, I don't have a figure. The intent was to put in uh, budget bids for next financial year, but that's not to say um, as we're working on the proposal to come back to council around the community garden, we can't look at some of the proposals that are in the biodiversity plan to try and uh, incorporate some of those. Um, now that we have the plan, we've got something to work with. And so we give evidence base back to the chamber that we can bring some stuff forward to you um, within this existing budgets, or we may look to seek other funds this financial year if council is considering of that. Uh, thank you for that. Um, question is, it would be more capital or more operating if we implement some of the... Uh, Again, if it's on council property and we're implementing infrastructure, it will be capital. If we're actually issuing out grant funding and supporting other external groups, it would be operating. So it'd be very much dependent on what we are supporting. Got some one in our community that we can support um, that are really rallying a number of volunteers and residents um, to do some of this work, which is fantastic. Support them. Um, are there any, Councillor Mann? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. No, I just want to um, express uh, thanks to the team uh, about this uh, this report. And um, I think the, with these management plans, there is a significant amount of work that goes into them and a, and a lot of contributions th throughout the entire council team. So just want to recognise them for that work and um, thank them because uh, I think there's going to be significant uh, long-term benefits for the City of Victor Harbour for having this plan. And um, it's uh, exciting. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any further questions or any debate? Then all those in favour? Those against? That's carried, thank you. We now come to the minutes of council meetings. The first one is a recommendation to receive a note the minutes of the mover for that. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. Second, Councillor Burns. Do either of you want to speak to that? Does anybody have any questions about those minutes? If not, I'll put it to the those in favour. Those against. That's carried. Thank you. <coughs> the Disability Access and Inclusion Advisory Committee minutes. Um, there are three recommendations there. I will do them on block. Somebody might like to move that. Thank you, Councillor Schiller. Second, Councillor Henderson. Do either of you want to speak to them? Councillor Schiller. Uh, note that we've uh, decided to put the diversity statement in our um, agenda. I think that's completely appropriate, considering we are a disability advisory committee. The other one we've got in there is that uh, we are supporting the um, access and inclusion category for uh, business Victor Harbour and I'd like to see, see some promotion going on to make uh, the community also aware of access and inclusion, not just businesses. So, thank, thank you. you. Yes, and I do notice that and I'll read that out for the uh, members of the gallery who may be interested um, that um, that the Council promotes the Business Victor Harbour Excellence in Business Awards, in particular the Excellence in Business Awards for Inclusion. 
so um, organisations um, who are very inclusive can actually uh, promote their organisation as being an inclusive organisation. I think that's a really good way in, in Victor Harbour. Um, does anybody else wish to speak to these? No. In that case, I'll put that to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Southern Community Transport Scheme Advisory Committee. I'll do the recommendation one and two on block. Moved by Councillor Henderson and seconded by, thank you, Councillor McKenzie. Do either of you want to speak to these minutes? Has anyone got any questions about the minutes? Case then, all those in favour and those against, that's carried, thank you. <coughs> There are no subsidiary and representative reports, no matters of urgency, no questions on notice received by the legislative time frame. Are there any questions without notice? Question without notice, Councillor Burns? I, I do, I have two questions. Um, I was just looking to see if there was any update on the municipal sites for this community. And the second was, um, looking for an update with the administration with members on their liability if compliance issues were not addressed and the incident occurred. Uh, yes, so uh, in regards to the community garden, uh, the, that item will be coming back to workshop with members and I was just trying to clarify the date. So I know a number, fair bit of information has been collated at the moment. A number of different sites are being explored and different models. Uh, it's on the 9th of October, it's coming back to members. Uh, in regards to your second question, so uh, members would have received an email from Graham Pat House on Friday, which gave you an update. We're just waiting on the information coming back. In regards to the building fire safety, we provided you with copies of the due diligence reports that were undertaken for those facilities when we purchased them. That had a lot of information in regards to building fire safety. Um, but for the benefit of members, we're just waiting on that advice to come back. And we did send an email to you on Friday. I saw the email. I was looking specifically as to the liability. Both of those questions, one from legal advice and one from yep. the scheme, Correct. have been asked. I'm just yep. waiting on that back. Councillor Crimber, you had a question without notice. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Councillor Mann mentioned earlier today that uh, we've delivered plenty of projects under budget. Would we have a list of those projects or even some of them? I'd just be interested to know what those projects are. Certainly the Main Street was one of them. Under budget, um, was it? Absolutely. Um, but we can, um, I can ask that a list be provided if that's something that you would like. Um, but what I'll do is I'll ask if the council want that as a whole rather than, um, you know, one, one elected member. So if you think, if you'd like it, um, put your hand up. Yep, okay, so I'll... Um, whether or not that can, that can be arranged. Um, through the Mayor, so we normally will provide um, with the financial statements to the Audit Committee um, an analysis report on budget versus um, actuals and generally we'll provide that overall but also one on, on actual um, capital projects as well. So it is something that, that we do at the end of each, um, each financial year. Um, so that will probably come to the Audit Committee and then Council around November once we've finished everything off. Are you happy for that, um, Councillor Karimba? I was actually after some, some of the ones we've already done. Just just sort of so when the community come to me and have a gripe about things, I can say, well, look at this, we've done this under budget, we've done this under budget, we've done this under budget. So it's basically just to you know answer some of the questions that the community may have regarding certain projects. Any other questions? Any other questions without notice? No. Move on to motions on notice. Councillor Karimba, you have a motion um, on notice? Yes. Uh, I move that the City of Victor Harbour formally resolve not to provide ratepayer funding of any uh, to any local, state or national campaigns on the voice referendum. As we have a large diverse community ranging in age, race, religion and beliefs, it would not be fair and reasonable to assume how many our, how, how our community will vote and nor should we. 
local governments across Australia continue to act in spaces where their ratepayers do not want them. This was evident in a furious backlash after ratepayers of the city, of city uh, sorry, the Mitcham City Council, on a recent five dollar radio show, after it was announced that they would take sides in a heated and divisive debate over the Indigenous voice to Parliament and give yes campaigns forty thousand dollar of ratepayers' money. I believe this is effectively telling ratepayers it has no respect for their own opinions in this debate and no respect for their ability and their right to inform their own referendum vote. We have the opportunity to show Victor Harbour residents we trust they are mature enough to inform their own referendum vote. It is not our place to tell them what to do. It's the ratepayers' place to tell them what they what they tell us what they need. It doesn't matter if we personally back the voice to parliament or not. We have no business using ratepay money to support either campaign when there are many residents and ratepayers supporting both. Ratepayers, especially those in Victor Harbour who are generally older and wiser than most, are mature and informed enough to have their own debate on this and may and, and, or any other matters, and it's entirely appropriate we leave them to it. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Dr Burns, did you want to speak to that? Only that. Um had a, a number of people in the community uh, express concerns that they want to be able to make up the decision themselves, and I've always supported the council shouldn't get involved in which the council hasn't. Which, um, so, support. Does anybody want to speak to that motion? Councillor Schiller, Councillor Henderson. Um, on the face of it, this looks like and could be taken the wrong way if we vote one way or the other, and I don't feel that we should have been put in this position in the first place because basically this um, vote, there has been no discussion within council. As far as I'm aware, I haven't had any discussion with any councillor about this issue ever, and I don't think I've uh, I, unless there's been some discussion elsewhere that I don't know about. So we're sort of drawing attention to an issue that wasn't an issue. So I find that the motion isn't really about the motion itself, it was how it was conducted. We found out about this through the media and it didn't come to us first, it went to the media first. So from that perspective, it's not the motion itself, it's the way it was conducted. Councillor Henderson. Yes, I agree with Councillor Schiller. This uh, motion, in my opinion, is totally inappropriate. It's based on a premise of something happening, of which there was no suggestion of ever happening. We've already allocated our budget for this financial year, and the council has not considered allocating any funds towards the referendum in any way whatsoever. I agree that ratepayer money should not be spent on, on local, state or national um, engagement on the voice. That will be an individual choice for every voting adult. However, I also believe that politics should not be brought into this chamber, and that's exactly what this motion is doing, so I will not be supporting it. Is there any, is there any further discussion? Councillor Mann? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor Jenkins. Um, I guess I'd firstly have to disagree with Councillor Schiller. Uh, I think for me, the issue is more with the motion. I guess motions um, that say that council is not going to do something when it was never going to do it in the first place, nor was it asked to do it, uh, I don't think are very conducive of our time and, and what we can be spending debating issues. Um, and I think, you know, if I guess, and I appreciate Councillor uh, Krember's uh, example around Mitcham City Council, but you know, I think if we were to move motions not doing things just uh, based on what other councils were doing, we'd probably have a, a lot of motions uh, on our agendas and we, we'd be here all night. So um, I, 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 I'm not in support of these motions to, to do uh, nothing, which we weren't going to do anything anyway in the first place. I just uh, don't think they achieve uh, much. Councillor Mann, does anybody else want to speak to this? Councillor Kemp? Uh, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. I guess it's one of those situations of uh, we don't know what we don't know. And I guess if you interpret this motion, the way I interpret it is to ensure 
that um, we never be faced with that decision. If it was brought to the chamber that, you know, we've got to have that debate. I think local government is what it says, local government. So where our politics sits within local government area, not in state or federal. Yes, we can advocate, we can do all sorts of things uh, at those other levels. So uh, in this context, the way I interpret it is to ensure that this uh, doesn't come to the chamber for a future discussion and debate. Are there any further comments, questions? You've got a question, Councillor May? Yeah, uh, just a question. If Council was to support this motion, could uh, this issue come back to Council for discussion or debate? That one for me? Double. <laughs> I guess, sorry to refine that. Um, could. Uh, I guess, is a motion only as good as the current motion before Council, and in which case, uh, even if we said we weren't going to uh, discuss or resolve something, it doesn't mean at the next motion that couldn't be overturned or another motion put and oh, the matter discussed further. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, I answered it. <laughs> um, are there any further comments on this? Councillor Quinton, did you want to say anything? Uh, just echoing uh, Braden's points that, um, yeah, I mean, it'd be different if we had talked about spending money on it, but we haven't, so I don't really see the point in the motion at this point in time. Um, Councillor McKenzie, did you want to speak to this? Uh, yeah, just a question, sort of what Braden was saying as well about coming back to the Chamber. If it was say something that we had to decide on spending money on, does it have to come back to the Chamber anyway because it would be a budget implication? That's a good, a good point, um, CEO. Through the Mayor, um, it's not about the amount of money. I mean, there are some things that we, you know, there could be someone that seeks a donation on it for something. <laughs> But um, given, I mean, obviously I'm informed by um, the intent of, and the appetite of the chamber. So, um, yeah, it's not something I would use my delegation to support something based on the discussion around the chamber and not that I would have any intent. But again, there may be um, a direction from the federal government to councils when the voice is out about how they dis distribute information. So um, it's not to say the item would not possibly come back to the chamber if there we had a direction or something came to the chamber from some other group. Um, but I believe that Councillor Corumba's motion is quite specific. It talks about campaigns. So, um, yeah, it's a bit different. Councillor Corumba, do you want to close the debate? Yes, I would. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Sorry, is there somebody's phone on or music playing somewhere? Thank you. Um, I hear what everybody's saying and, you know, I understand that it doesn't seem to be a big thing and that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid is that we just stick to our core business, um, as I said in my sort of motion. So I think this is um, already going to be divisive as it is and it's best that we stick, stay out of it. We've all got our own decisions to make when it comes to the referendum and we'll do that with our conscience um, and the information provided to us. But I don't believe that this motion is intrusive other than the fact to say, let's just avoid it as a group. We can each have our individual vote. We can campaign as we choose, but this chamber stays apolitical and that's exactly what I'm trying to um, facilitate. So I'm hoping that people see that as it is. Uh, I guess the question would then be answered if this motion doesn't get up, what message will we be sending to our community uh, regarding this issue and what can of worms will that be opening? Thank you. Councillor Karimba, I now put the vote to the floor. Those in favour and those against, that motion is lost. And I think, Councillor, we can have a division. If you like, all those in favour? Councillor Burns, Councillor Karimba and Councillor Kemp. Those against, Councillor Mann, Councillor McKenzie. Councillor Schiller, Councillor Quinton and Councillor Henderson. And I think in answer to your question, um, Councillor Karemba, the message that it's sending, I think loud and clear, 
I've heard that um, we don't want the chamber to be involved in um, in federal politics. It's not an issue. It's not something that we've um, we've budgeted for, and um, that the majority of the chamber um, say that it just needs to lie, um, and individual people make up their mind. We now move to item 18.2. Motion on notice, Councillor Karimba, Arts and Culture Centre. Um, and would you like to move your motion? Yes. Uh, I move that the City of Victor Harbour not spend any more funds on the Arts and Cultural Centre apart from any required fire safety and disability compliance issues for the cinema that may need to be addressed under the relevant acts until the proposed sports precinct or a more affordable alternative within our council loan borrowing parameters such as only a four court basketball and other sports stadium is built and other and has been operational for 12 months. I have a second for that. Councillor Burns. Councillor Crim, do you want to speak to speak to your motion? I think this is pretty self-explanatory. All I'm trying to do here is make sure that we leave no stone unturned when it comes to delivering this stadium. We've been in plenty of meetings and discussions where we all say this is a priority, um, but just recently uh, it was brought to my attention that the discussion of switching out um, the arts and culture with the sports precinct, um, and that's why we need to be shovel ready on the arts and culture centre, just puts a little bit of concern into whether we are actually 100% committed to this project. That's why I put this motion up, plain and simple. There's no ulterior motive other than to make sure that we, we follow the priority that we said we were going to follow. We've, ignition, we, we've outlined the fact that the sports precinct or a basketball stadium is exactly what's needed. It's the highest priority when it comes to surveys. And I'd just like to make sure that we um, produce that for the community. Councillor Burns, do you want to speak to this? Um, I've, I probably have a similar view. I think we need to focus on delivering one major project that getting distracted. Um, if if there was potential to do the Arts and Culture Centre sooner, soon after we get this up and going, rather than potentially a couple of council terms in the future, that's where I get concerned. I think we need to just focus on a bit of a one and look at what's there's not um, I read this as saying we're not looking to not do uh, an arts and culture centre, but the priority is in delivering the sports precinct, and any monies that we're looking to spend should be on delivering the sports precinct first or the basketball stadium first. Thank you. Councillor Schiller. We've had a couple of discussions about this prior. When we did our budget, we had a, um, an, a uh, motion go up to. Uh, take money out and we voted on it at the time and it's been lost. So it feels a bit like Groundhog Day again. Um, we've got two examples of recent history where grants have come available. We've got the one that has just come up for our precincts and we're going to go uh, look at that in the future. And then um, the Labor government recently um, after the uh, soccer um, that we had recently just dropped a, a grant out of the middle of nowhere. So if we don't have our plans in place earlier in the piece and a grant comes along that suits the arts, we're not going to be ready. We were also this history of the arts centre goes way before the, the um, sports precinct was at the point where it is now. We've had many, many different concepts for the arts precinct. So although the sports precinct is very important, I think we know we need to owe other parts of the community <coughs> the opportunity to have that plan in place. Councillor Henderson. Yes, I agree with Councillor Schiller. I think this would be very short-sighted to support this motion and it would also be very poor strategic planning. I think new councillors need to be aware that if we don't have major projects shovel-ready, then we risk the possibility of missing out on grant funding. 
The South Australian and federal governments are both halfway through their terms and are at the stage where they're, they are delivering on election promises and we need to be ready for opportunities arising for funding. Also, not all young people play sport and residents have been asking for a decent performance space for over 20 years. We've uh, not done any upgrades to the town hall because this arts and culture centre has been on the cards and in design mode for at least four and a half years. And I think it would be, as I said, very short sighted to stop anything proceeding. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Councillor Mann. <coughs> Yeah, no, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. Um, I guess uh, I appreciate the comments around the chamber. Um, you know, I, I, as I've said before, Councillor Cranbrook, I very much appreciate your passion for the sports precinct, but um, I guess what I see is I see the same passion and excitement for the project all around our team, uh, whether that's our fellow elected members or, or our staff. Uh, I, I can't honestly thank uh, Kathy Hader and her team enough for the work that they've done in this space. and. Uh, though a lot of it's currently in confidence, it's uh, I find it all very exciting and, and where the project's going. And um, I guess draw upon um, uh, Councillor Cranby your, your previous remarks about the last agenda item and not wanting to uh, have any division or, or uh, divisiveness in the community. But I guess my worry around this motion is that it may lead to some uh, division. Uh, it seems to be based on a, a risk that uh, the basketball stadium won't occur before the arts and culture precinct. Um, but from every angle I look at it and every discussion we've had, I don't see that as a risk at all. Um, you know, we look at the long-term financial plan and um, it's got right up front, we've got the basketball, the recs and sport precinct and right at the latter end is the arts and culture precinct, right in the at eight, nine, 10, those, those years there. Um, but I guess you also got to look at the practical elements which our fellow councillors have drawn upon tonight. It, in terms of if we're looking at strategic planning and um, uh, a significant major project, even one that we're looking at 10 years away, still requires us to be working on it, planning on it. We can't just halt the work on it. For example, if you look at the uh, Sport and Rec precinct, that's at a lead in time of over 10 years. So if we applied the same metric, we might not be delivering it at the same uh, rate that we're delivering it now. It might be even longer. So I guess. Uh, I, I very much appreciate the, the passion for the project and um, I, I definitely uh, agree with the sentiment, uh, but I just don't think that this uh, achieves what, um, I guess, uh, achieves what uh, is what you're wanting to achieve necessarily, um, but I don't think there's that risk and I'm, I'm very excited to continually work on this project and I'm very excited um, uh, and uh, happy with the work that's coming out of staff and um, I guess that's all I want to say on it at this stage. Councillor Mann, does anybody else want to speak to this? Councillor Kemp. Uh, thank you, Mayor Jenkins. I've just got a couple of questions first before I make my commentary. Um, I just want to get around my head, which is Cinema 1 and which is Cinema 2. Which is the ground floor cinema, which is the upstairs cinema? Which one's 1 or 2? <laughs> I don't have the plans in front of me, but... Um... Again, I can confirm, but I would say downstairs is cinema one, upstairs yes. is cinema two. Normal thought process, thank you. Um, are there any fire exits from cinema one and cinema two? Again, I don't have the plans. There are fire exits from cinema one and there is a staircase from cinema, cinema two. Which is the same staircase you go up into and come down. So there's no fire exits for cinema two. Correct. It was the upstairs one. It's an existing, there's two staircases on either side from Cinema 2. You yeah. can go up either side yeah. and come down either yeah. side. Normally fire exits are external to entry, okay. egress areas, so they actually go out to a safe area. So there's no fire exits for Cinema 2. And um, can uh, disabled people access Cinema 1 and Cinema 2? Depends on their disability, Councillor Kemp. Wheelchair, crutches, you know, can't walk. Can they access Cinema 2? No, they can't access Cinema 2 because right. the stairs and they have never been able to since it was built. Okay. I guess uh, my commentary is around the fact that this is about public safety. 
I think the motion has been put forward, if you interpret it, is, is, is quite a complex motion because it has a very, a quite a variables in it. But the real reason of the motion, is, as I undertook it to be, is that we need to look at uh, fixing up the compliance issues of the cinema. And we're not talking about the whole cinema because when I put in uh, my report and are waiting for the feedback to come from those reports of requests for information, it talks about under the Minister's Building Standard 001 that you've got to have adequate fire safety systems in place. You don't have to comply and upgrade the whole building, which in the commentary from Mr. Pathouse talks about why do we go down the path of having to upgrade the whole building, why not the town hall, why not the art space as well. So to me, that supports the motion in one way because he recognises that we don't have adequate fire safety systems in place. So what I um, look at is basically um, I do support this motion due to the public safety to make the cinema fire safety systems and disability access uh, adequate. And I think they are not adequate and I'll explain in a minute. Once the council does construction on the new arts and culture centre, then full compliance of the fire safety systems and disability access will be addressed when we go to construction phase through the design. I see uh, stage one design, which is nearly completed. I'm a bit unsure why um, um, we have to go back to um, to designers to say we need to incorporate some more fire safety systems uh, to be built into that. That would be part of the design process. To you go to have the stage one design is it's, it's phase one of construction, which means you need to have those systems in place anyway. So and of course we don't know when we go to construct. Maybe six, seven years time. Um, so the Victor uh, Cinema Fire Safety System system is inadequate in my belief when you look at the reports. We have a Building Fire Safety Committee which looks at, uh, uh, on behalf of council, uh, all count, or council's buildings as well as other buildings, fire safety. It talks about under the Planning SA Council Building Fire Safety Committee uh, in September 2020, it came out that the local government councils play an important role in protecting the ongoing safety of buildings, occupiers and users through the provisions of the Planning, Development and Infrastructure Act of 2016, the PDI Act, Section 157 of the PDI Act. That's the your power. time, Councillor Kemp. Sorry? It's your time. Don't I get a 30, 30 second warning? And, 30, and do, do, 30 30 do questions actually take part of your three minute commentary? No, they don't, and you've got 30 seconds. No, I, but my questions were about at least a minute or two long. They don't, they're not part of my commentary. Continue your commentary, Councillor Kemp. Thank you. Um, we talked about the, the PDI Act established the power for a council to investigate whether building owners are maintaining proper levels of fire safety in their buildings for the protection of all occupiers whether they be residents and workers who use them regularly or clients and visitors who only use them occasionally. I wrote to the CEO on the 12th of August receiving, uh, requesting certain information, which she's replied tonight that she's gathering all this information together. But I didn't make that request on behalf of all elected members to receive that report, those information. Personally, I wanted some information. I thought one report could have came to me was the Building Fire Safety Communities Inspection Report of the Victor Cinema, which was the last one. I thought that could have been, that's on your files, I thought that could have been sent through me. That was provided to everyone on Friday. What, the Building Fire Safety? Not the Building Fire no, Safety, no, it was a due diligence report. Building Fire Safety hasn't been through the cinema. Okay. We had a due diligence report undertaken by a independent fire safety organisation that provided that report, and you're provided with that on Friday. And um, Graham Pathouse references in his email about engaging with building fire safety to come through to address any other concerns. Because that was report was to look at the next three to five years. Obviously, council wasn't doing its arts and cultural centre up front, but it was to see what things we could mitigate just because we had take ownership of it and we were looking to progress. Doesn't mean we had to upgrade everything in accordance with the standards, but we needed to put um, management um, uh, processes in place and mitigations in place um, based on those reports and that's what had been happening. Okay, um, oh, I guess a question will be asked then why hasn't the Building Fire Safety Committee in investigated the fire safety systems for adequacy in the cinema? Um, 
It is a public building and a lot of people sit in It there. is, but the Building Fire Safety Committee sets its own agenda as to which buildings it chooses to look through. Um, and we can then make recommendations for it to look through buildings, which Graham has referenced he will be doing or has done. Okay, well, I won't debate the Building Fire Safety Committee's role, but um, that due diligence report you spoke about, I have reviewed the 174 page report that was presented to Council on the 18th of May. And there are statements that in 2020, when we first got it, um, but there are statements that indicate the fire safety system was inadequate and disability access is inadequate. The current Can minister. You please wrap up, Councillor. Yes, I am. I'm finishing off. Keep interrupting me, Mayor. It's going to take longer. <laughs> so, please. Um, I'll start. I'll start again. I have reviewed the 174-page report that was presented to Council in May 2020, the original time. There are statements that indicate the fire safety systems was inadequate and disability access is inadequate. Current municipal building standards of um, upgrading health and safety in existing buildings may states that all new building works required by the accurate regulation apply with the current building rules. However, with the exception of a few specific matters, respective retrospective upgrading of existing buildings is not required under legislation unless a relevant authority or an appropriate authority. Councillor Kemp, has your, identified Councillor that there Kemp are your time is up. Thank I'll seek you leave very of much. the meeting to finish my <coughs> statement, please, because of the number of interruptions I've had. You've had more than more than enough time, um, but certainly um, if with the leave of the meeting, um, you can have another um, another three minutes um, if you I would I like. Won't, yeah, I won't so are minutes. you can I just ask for those people who say that Councillor Kemp can have another three minutes? Thank you very much. Councillor Kemp, continue. Thank you, Mayor Jenkins. <clears throat> As I'll start. Under the Ministerial uh, Upgrading of Health and Safety in Existing Buildings, it states, and this came out in May 2023, all new building work is required by the Act and regulations to comply with the current building rules. However, with exceptions of a few specific matters, retrospective upgrading of existing buildings is not required under legislation unless a relevant authority or an appropriate authority has identified there are health and safety risks for the building occupants, or in some cases, access issues that needs to be addressed as disability access. At the moment, we've verified tonight through questions, there's no fire exit from Cinema 2, inadequate fire safety systems for uh, egress and escape for people in case of a fire. Um, I guess we haven't determined if there's any emergency lighting in the building, which is now, which should be looked at. Uh, are the current smoke detectors, because the report in 20, in, sorry, in 2020, spoke about the smoke detectors could be better fitted than what was in there. Um, it talks about um, maybe a fire alarm panel is monitored by the local um, fire station or through to the headquarters in Adelaide instead of a local system. Uh, it's inadequate for disabled persons throughout the cinema. There's no disabled toilets. So to me, that report identified, and councillors had since 2020, has not had done its due diligence in looking at inadequacies of the cinema for, for public safety. And uh, whether the reports come back from mutual liability scheme or liability against selected members for bad decision making, in my case, I'm talking about public safety and the health and wellbeing of people who go in that cinema. I think council should make this a priority to make at least adequate compliant if there are inadequacies in there. And we all we know there is inadequacies in there already. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. And I'd remind you and other councillors to please speak about the recommendation um, rather than going off on tangents. The recommendation point of order. here. The point of order. I don't agree with your point of order. The I haven't made a, I haven't given my is, point of order, Mayor Jenkins. I have to give my reasons for a point of order, whether you agree with it or not, until I've actually said something. Please follow meeting procedures. My point of order is that I was speaking to the motion because I'm talking about compliance of fire safety and disability access in the cinema. So that's what I was talking to. I wasn't talking about the sporting precinct. I'm not talking about the arts and culture set of construction upgrades or whatever. I was talking about compliance, which is part of the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. I don't agree with your point of order. I the, move to the overturn the mayor's. Excuse me, Councillor Kent. I, I you need to listen to the reasons why I don't agree with your point of order. I don't agree with your point of order because the recommendation was not to spend any more funds on the Art and Culture Centre, apart from any required fire safety and disability compliance that needs to be addressed until the proposed sports precinct or a more affordable alternative is within um, 
current loan borrowing parameters, such as the forecourt basketball and other sports stadiums. You've spent at least five minutes talking about fire safety um, issues with the cinema, which is not what this recommendation um, was about. So um, I don't agree with your point of order. You've spoken, you've had more time to speak um, than is allowed, and I think we need to move on. I move to overturn your um, decision on the point of order. Certainly, do you have a seconder? Thank you. All those who agree? That motion's lost. My point of order stands. Does anybody else want to speak? No, Councillor Karemba, would you like to close your argument? Thank you, uh, Mayor Jenkins. Um, this motion actually sort of was born out of, um, I guess, I actually got to thank Councillor Mann because he actually raised this first issue at the budgetary meeting when he put an amendment in to remove the $400,000 from the Arts and Cultural Centre because I think he could see potentially that these projects could be switched. Um, which I voted for, and I guess that is my concern. That is why I want to make sure this is a priority. I, I didn't say to stop any work on the Arts and Cultural Centre other than what is required for disability and fire safety compliance. I really am concerned, as I said, in a meeting, uh, I think it was a uh, audit committee meeting where there was discussion that we had to spend all that money on these plans for the Arts and Culture Centre because we needed to be shovel ready. The other reason that I'm concerned is that we also have been expressively told by the administration on numerous occasions that we can only afford one major project at least every one to two terms. So can, I, I really struggle to understand how it is that we can have to be shovel ready for something that <coughs> won't be built for seven, eight, nine years, regardless of whether we actually have grant funding that comes along, we actually can't physically borrow that money. So that is why I put this motion forward. Um, no other reason, trying to make the uh, the basketball uh, or the, the sports stadium a priority. We keep saying it's a priority. So really there should be, a, this should be a foregone conclusion. It's a pretty simple motion, um, but we'll see what happens, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. I'll now put that to the vote. All those in favour? Those against? That motion's lost. Would you like a division, Councillor Burns? Those in favour? Councillor Burns, Councillor Karemba and Councillor Kemp. Those against? Councillor Mann, Councillor McKenzie, Councillor Schiller, Councillor Quinton and Councillor Henderson. That motion is lost. It is 10 past eight, so we probably need to have a break. We have three more items, so I'm happy to either, one more item, sorry. One more item. So I'm happy to have a break, or if you want to continue that last item, we'll continue. Continue, move on. Sorry, toilet break. All right, we'll have a five minute toilet break and then we'll do the last item.
seats, please. Thank you, Councillor Karimba. And I said we've got one more motion, um, and that's another motion on notion on notice. Accessible and affordable housing. Council Karimba, would you like to propose your motion, please? Uh, I'd like to seek leave of the meeting, if I can. Or do I have to propose the motion first? To seek leave of the meeting to do what? Uh, just to uh, rem to remove the motion for another day. Oh, you want to to leave it for another day? Yes. Yeah. So you want I just to I just have to do some research on some of the commentary. That's all. Okay, so you want to withdraw your you can withdraw I'll, your motion and then you can bring it back another. Correct, I'll withdraw the motion. Thank oh, you. Well, in that case, we're finished. No, we're not. I thought you said that was the last one. Oh, I took it. I took it. sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Are there any motions without notice? Are there any? There are no confidential items. Now the meeting is closed. Thank you. <laughs>